Today's topic is diagnostic hysterolaparoscopy. So what we are seeing here is a operative hysteroscope which has got a, an instrument inserted through the instrument channel and the hysteroscope inserted through the main channel and then this is the inlet one and this is the outlet one. So the proximal one is usually the inlet one. Now uh, coming to the learning objectives of this talk. So we have a to understand that uh, after the end of this talk, a person will be able to understand the utilizing and the effective tool of hysteroscopy and laparoscopy and select an appropriate patient for an operative laparoscopy prior to IVF or prior to any other uh, procedures. And a person should be able to make changes in the clinical practice as per expertise and available resources by introducing diagnostic hysterolaparoscopy in patient management in routine care. And a person should be able to identify the pre-malignant and benign lesions of at hysteroscopy. Now, what are the indications of hysteroscopy? So, it has been used as a diagnostic tool uh, for abnormal uterine bleeding, which can be caused by some mucus or intramural fibroids or myomas, endometrial polyps. It can be used to diagnose endometrial atrophy, which is causing abnormal uterine bleeding. It can be used to diagnose endometrial cancers. Hysteroscopy is also used in infertility and it can be used to diagnose intrauterine adhesions of Asherman syndrome, which is a triad of a patient who has given a history of DNC done for a intended or a septic abortion and following which the patient develops endometrial atrophy and fibrous adhesions and the vigorous curettage has led to the problems of hypomenorrhea and amenorrhea. So, these dense additions in the uterine cavity as evidenced by hysteroscopy is called as Asherman syndrome. And then uh, we can also diagnose some mucus fibroids and endometrial polyps and uterine malformations can also be detected in hysteroscopy. Though it cannot differentiate between septate and biconvoid uterus, but a combined hysterolaparoscopy can be used to do this job. Now coming to the preparation of patient for hysteroscopy. So we have to take a detailed history and complete physical examination. So the surgeon should sit on the uh, foot end of the patient and patient should be placed in a lithotomy position. And it is preferable to do the procedure uh, hysteroscopy uh, in the first part of the menstrual cycle, usually between day 6 to day 9 because there is less mucus. So there is a better viewing in the proliferative endometrium as compared to the secretory endometrium. And also there is no chance of uh, encountering the pregnancy if the it is done in between day 6 to day 9 of cycle. So, we should have an informed patient consent, place the patient in lithotomy position and do a uh, per vaginum uh, examination to ascertain the uterine size, uterine position and any adenexal masses. So, first we clean the uh, cervix with antiseptics and then introduce the hysteroscope in vagina and close the vagina with the labial forceps and then gently we have to start to dilate the cervix with the pressure of the fluid and the light source and normal saline supply are connected to the instrument with the help of a hysteromat and uh, insert the hysteroscope into the cervical canal and the cervical canal will start dilating because of the hydrostatic pressure developing inside the vagina and we have to keep the pressure in the hysteromat between 120 to 200 millimeters of mercury and wherever the fluid is going we have to be very gentle and then uh, advance the hysteroscope. So during uh, vaginoscopy we have fluid filled vagina with normal saline and uh, visualization of an endometriotic nodule in the vagina. Now as we enter into the cervix we can see the nebothian cysts and these are the various uh, instruments which can be used to uh, operate on these kind of lesions. They include the graspers, the scissors and the biopsy forceps and the myoma screws. Now the inside the cervix as we enter, we can find two patterns. These are called as the plica palmite or the arbor vitae. So arbor vitae is a branching T-like pattern. So the arrangement of epithelium at the level of cervical canal is made up of longitudinal ridges and these are called as plica palmite. And on top of these longitudinal ridges, there are oblique branches. So that gives the appearance of tree branches. So this is called as, so this is uh, plica palmite and this is called as arbor vitae. So this is the endocervical canal and it is very easily identified with the presence of uh, arbor vitae and plica palmite. 
Now coming to any lesions inside the cervix. So we can see that this is a tongue like projection of mucosa which is uh, hanging in the endocervical canal which has been identified by uh, Plica palmite and arborvite and uh, this is the uh, so this is a pseudo cervical because it is hanging seen hanging from the internal loss and uh, now coming into the endometrial cavity so endometrial cavity we have it can be a menstruating endometrial cavity proliferative phase early luteal phase or late luteal phase so menstrual pattern is one to four days of menstrual cycle during the bleeding proliferative phase is fifth day to 14th day early luteal phase 14 to 21 days and late luteal 22 to 28 days so this is red proliferative phase endometrium will be pink early luteal will be white and late luteal will also be white so menstrual endometrium is irregular proliferative is smooth early luteal is wavy and late luteal is spongy so menstruating is very thin 0.1 mm whereas in the proliferative phase it is 2 to 5 mm early luteal phase more than 6 mm and late luteal phase more than 7 mm in the menstrual phase the glands are absent in the proliferative phase the glands are seen as white dots in the early luteal phase the glands are prominent and late luteal phase also they are absent so there are no notches and whereas in proliferative phase we can see some hemorrhagic areas and this is only the serous discharge is seen in the early luteal and the late luteal phase there are no vessels seen in the menstrual pattern menstrual phase whereas in the proliferative there is thin vessels are seen in the early luteal and late luteal because of the secretory changes the blood vascularity is again not seen now this is a hysteroscopic picture of a uh, endometrial hyperplasia now this hyperplasia can be differentiated so in hysteroscopically it can be a simple or complex so in a simple endometrial hyperplasia there is a focal or diffuse thickening of endometrium whereas in complex there will be increased endometrial thickness in the entirety of the endometrium in uh, simple there is increased superficial vascularization whereas in complex there will be abnormal neovascularization in the simple there is an increased density of glandular openings whereas in complex there is irregular polypoidal structures and in the simple endometrial hyperplasia the endometrial glands will be dilated whereas in complex endometrial hyperplasia there will be a friable or necrotic endometrial tissue so this is again uh, endometrial polyp and this is a hysteroscopic grasper which can be uh, used to hold this and it, we can introduce a scissors in the same way and cut the polyp at the base and send it for uh, histopathology. Mm -hmm.